What's up everybody, Jared here again for the smoking Android. So they really have done it. They've thrown in everything in the kitchen sink, figuratively of course. <laughs> um, but when I'm talking about kitchen sink, if you haven't already heard or checked it out for yourself, um, I really, really recommend you do so. It's, um, man, it, it includes a fantastic mod um, called Aroma and um, thanks to the Moto Tegra dev team uh, that consists of a couple of the people that I'm familiar with, Joker Sack, as many of you are aware of, as well as Bill, a uh, good friend, and they've been working tirelessly and, and I know they have, I know for a fact that they have not gotten much sleep because of this. <laughs> so, um, you know, really thank you so much to them for all the insane amounts of effort they've thrown at this um, um, project for us and that's really what it is is an awesome project and what they've done is actually they've included a whole bunch of ROMs and tweaks and modifications that you can apply before the installation process of the actual ROM itself and it's not just the actual ROM itself a, a singular I'm talking about they've packed in about four well four or five or more apps, give or take, <laughs> and um, they've done a fantastic job of it. And today we're going to be taking a look at it itself. Now, there's two things that I probably love the most about this project. One, you've got your choice of all these different ROMs and it flashes quickly and while you're selecting all your customizations, well that, that's basically it, is the customizations before the install. You don't have to do this um, post install, it's all pre, so that's just fantastic. And probably my my topper for favorite things about this uh, mod is um, the fact that you do not have to flash before you do anything. You literally just go to install, install the kitchen sink, and like you normally would any other ROM, it fires up and it does all the wiping for you, so that's just amazing. Now some of you are probably wondering or are unfamiliar with this recovery I'm using right now. No, this is not the kitchen sink. Please don't be confused with that. This is actually Team Win Recovery Project's um, recovery um, sort of system here and um, I've actually been using it for a little while but we're not, uh, I'll, I'll be getting into that in another video but we're not here for that today. We are here for kitchen sink. So let's go ahead and take a look and as I said you'll see notice that I'm not wiping anything alright. So I'm just going to jump right into install. I'm going to go ahead and locate kitchen sink amongst these insane amounts of files I have on here and then I'm just going to go ahead and launch that. This will take just a second for it to kick in because, um, well the file is about 7, or uh, shoot, was it 500? It's about either 500 or 700 megabytes, I can't remember. I'm going to go with 700. It's a large file, it takes a moment to download. Um, don't be alarmed, but that's because they've got, you know, the 4 or 5 ROMs packed into it, so what do you expect, right? <laughs> um, as well as all the modifications, things like that. Now some things to keep in mind this is still a work in progress in fact this is actually now in beta stage so um, you know there's still a lot of work to be done and unfortunately the dev team doesn't really have an atrix or at least some members of the dev team don't have an atrix physically to work on themselves so they are kind of working for both photon and the Motorola atrix community to bring this to a sort of unified so um, again really really nice of them to do that um, this video does kind of apply both to if you have an atrix and a photon on because very similar, um, the builds are extremely similar, if not identical, um, with the exception of possibly a few things here or there that they're obviously still working on. So, um, obviously, you know, I'm going to tell you just the way CyanogenMod does, don't ask for ETAs, alright, they're working as hard as they can on this thing. So, um, now just to start off, for those of us with the Motorola Atrix, um, some of you may notice that the touch, because this is an, uh, a complete touch input, a complete touch user interface that uh, you're going to be using here. And um, so you'll notice right off the bat that you're going to start pressing the next button. You'll be wondering why it's not working. Um, that's because the touch at this point in time is just slightly off a little bit. If I was to go ahead and tap just above it, then next, and I will get into the next screen. Now, if you want to, if you if you don't mind, um, or if you don't want to sort of be um, mucking around with the... Um, 
uh, trying to touch it if it's not uh, kind of calibrated for you or your device. Um, what you can do is press the search button at the bottom. A new little window will pop up. You can select calibrate tools and remember you're kind of touching just above the button to, 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 to hit it there. Um, do you want to use alternate touch? Only use the, if the default me uh, method does not work. Um, do I want to use alternate touch? Yes I do. So then it's going to come up with this touch calibration. Um, now on the Atrix like I said it is a little bit iffy. If you're using a photon it's probably going to work perfectly for you guys just because you do have direct support from the devs um, but they're doing the best we can, they can for us Atrix users. So you'll see the, the uh, white dots there, you're just going to tap. Now, my little trick is just rapidly tap on it, okay? It'll get there, rapidly tap on it, rapidly tap, there it moves, oh, and tap that until you'll notice that next, it'll disappear, and that's when you, oh, see it's pretty far off there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, you get the picture, just be careful when you're tapping on it, and um, then you'll be able to, uh, then this will come up afterwards and it's just giving you some calibration things. You're just going to want to click yes and uh, that's that. Alright, so uh, once you've gone through all that, if you felt the need to, um, we'll go ahead and you can select a language. So that's the beautiful thing right now, as you can see there's a bunch of languages for us to choose from and obviously I'm in uh, an English speaking country so I'm going to go ahead and press next on that. And you're going to want to click I agree, um, basically just a disclaimer, you know, and a license and all this other legal stuff, basically, you know, don't rip off their work and they're not at all responsible for mucking up your device. Just the usuals, um, there's your version number and so on and so forth with the developer Team Moto Tegra, so thanks again to those guys. And uh, here's a bunch, uh, a change log of all the new things that they've added. So if you look at the bottom here, uh, some of the changes that they've made, um, they've updated CM9 to Joker uh, 0.6.0. They've added AOKP, added Gummy ROM. Now that's something interesting for us Atrix users. Gummy ROM hasn't exactly been quote unquote ported over. If you've noticed in the development section, there's no Gummy ROM. Um, I, I think that one's still under construction right now. Um, I'm not going to re recommend flashing that at the moment. I had some difficulties with that. Uh, I'm not going to get into that too much, but they are working on that. So uh, maybe just stay away from gummy ROM at the moment. Um, you still have AOKP. Um, they've removed build.prop tweaks. Uh, lots of changes, as they say, to the Aroma script itself. Lots of changes to the installer script. They fixed the Bravia mod. They've added a tablet mod, which is new. That's I can't wait to try that out. Uh, they've added battery mods. So if you've got um, an extended battery, which I know a lot of you do, um, then there's spe specific mods to uh, increase performance and optimize it. Um, remove file explorer options for now and added more boot animations. So we'll go ahead and follow through. Uh, as you can see, here's the base ROMs that you can choose from. So we've got CM9, MIUI, I'm going to zoom in for you guys there. Uh, we've got MIUI, CNA, AOKP, and Gummy ROM. So five ROMs for you to choose from, which is fantastic. Um, I'll go ahead and just pick AOKP ROM, and I'll click Next. And so you've got the choice, Custom Install or Default. We'll go with Custom for now. Uh, this is the part where you, uh, like I said before, you don't have to worry about wiping it because uh, you know you'll get to that eventually. Um, so if you're just basically fa flashing a new sort of um, update over top of the old ROM, you'd obviously select non-wipe. Or if perhaps if you're already running an ice cream sandwich ROM and you know you just want to kind of flash something over while retaining your data, you just click non-wipe and obviously full wipe if you're coming from, say, for instance, a gingerbread ROM or you just want a nice clean slate to start from go ahead and follow through with that. You've got two kernels to choose from at the moment. Joker's one, uh, 1300 uh, gigahertz or the 1400. That's actually 1 1.3 gigahertz or 1.4 gigahertz kernels. Um, I would have prefer to see the 1 gigahertz kernel in there, but I'm sure they've got their reason for not including that at the moment. So for batteries, I'm going to check uh, the 1.3 gigahertz. Tablet mod, do we want to install it? Sure, what the hell, right? That's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, MI, uh, MIUI boot animation. I'm going down. I'm going to tell you right off the bat right now that the gummy boot animation and the Galaxy Nexus boot animation, um, I haven't been able to tell the difference. Mind you, I don't sit there and stare and compare boot animations as I know that the Galaxy Nexus has a couple of different variations depending on what ROM you're running, uh, but basically they're the same, so I'm not sure what's different there, but nevertheless, uh, so we'll just keep AOKP boot animation and battery mod like I mentioned before um, for larger aftermarket batteries and no for the stock batteries. We'll go ahead and follow through. 
Moving on to the launchers, they've given us a bunch, and this is actually a new one here, the Xperia launcher. Um, I don't know if you guys have checked out my previous video of how to install the Xperia launcher. Um, it was actually, I believe, the Xperia S launcher, and it was just gorgeous, mind you. It was still in really early stages of being ported, so I'm interested personally to see how far along and how well this one's working. Uh, moving down to font, you've got all these different fonts to choose from. The Nokia Pure is something that I'm definitely interested in choosing. Um, so, uh, the keyboard, so I'll, I like my big keyboards, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the bigger keyboard. All thumbs. Um, so, uh, obviously GPS configuration, so you can check the particular um, you know area in the world where you are. So I'm in North America, I'll go ahead and pick that. TTS programs, Google or Pico, uh, MI, uh, MIUI music app or the CM9. I've always been partial to the CM9 music app. I'm not too sure why, it just seems to work so well for me. Um, G apps. Um, also, if you do want to test Gummy like I recommend against, um, they're saying that the market isn't working at the moment for it, so there's sort of more reason just to just sort of leave that alone at the moment, but uh, you know, it's really up to you if you can get it working. Uh, so G apps, that's nice to have in there, that way you don't have to download a separate file, which is usually a pain in the ass, thanks a lot for that Google. Uh, wallpapers, of course you're going to want wall wallpapers. Um, alternate 2D libs, so mm, the newest sources for me, thank you. Beats Audio. Hell yeah! Uh, Bravia mod, sure, what the hell, right? Some Bravia action. Moving on. All these different applications, um, you're probably going to want to install Adobe Flash, you've got Google Maps, you're going to want Gallery, I could live without the weather widget, I've got my own for that, YouTube app, of course, because you wouldn't be able to watch the smoking Android. Some extra wallpapers, I love wallpapers, and titanium backup, sure, what the hell, right? Gonna need that anyways. All right, so that's it. That was basically the entire installation of the, um, you know, the whole process there. And uh, now you just press install now. It'll do its thing. This is the loading screen of, uh, well, the flashing screen, or I don't even know, the install screen, I suppose you could call it. And um, you'll just notice that uh, all these things will start happening. I really like the user interface look of this while it's being flashed instead of, you know, the sort of DOS prompt look to uh, previous um, ways of flashing. Uh, quite honestly, if your ROM developer isn't using, or your favorite ROM developer isn't um, using this right now, I definitely recommend it. Uh, my favorite ROM is Neutrino ROM. Uh, those of you that have been with me for a while probably know that, and I would absolutely love to see him use Aroma Installer um, with his ROMs instead of flashing a bunch of add-ons. So, um, but that's just something, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go ahead and cut this video here, and we'll come back once it's finished flashing, because there's no sense in watching the bar go across but for some reason man this thing flashes quickly much quicker than uh, most uh, the, the the normal ways of, uh, of uh, traditional ways I'm sorry of flashing a ROM so again we'll be back it looks like it's almost finished so we'll be back in just a moment okay well apparently as literally as soon as I said that I turned the I cut the video and it finished so you saw the entire, basically you saw the entire installation go down uh, right on camera. I mean that was what, 30 seconds? You know, um, most ROMs take about a minute, possibly more to flash. Anyway, so this is what it looks like when it's done. And we'll go ahead and follow through. As you'll notice, I've finished installation reboot and enjoy. And the next screen here, so you have the option to reboot your device now. I, I don't know why you wouldn't, um, but... <laughs> so we'll go ahead and uh, this is just the look of what it looks like when... Um, for Team Win Recovery Project. So I'll go ahead and, uh, okay, obviously you didn't let me slide it across. That's a bug in the recovery. Uh, so we're just gonna wait here and let's take a look at the AOKP boot animation. All right. Yeah. Gotta love the unicorn. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh man. <laughs> you know, if my friends ever saw me reboot my phone, <laughs> Uh, I'd never hear the end of it. Alright, so I'll just go ahead and we'll follow through. I'll cut this video now <laughs> and come back once the ROM is booted up just to kind of prove that everything went smoothly. Alright, so there we go. It's all booted up and ready to go. I'm still laughing about that goddamn uh, unicorn. <laughs> I just... Uh, okay. And uh, so I'll just click not now. Go away. Alright, so I'm not sure the Xperia launcher uh, worked for me. In fact, I'm pretty sure it didn't. Um, so, but anyways, still, it worked. And uh, obviously, this is still a beta build, so there's still work to be done. 
maybe some bugs to be worked out, but it is fantastic. Everything is there, everything works as you can see. AOKP -OK ROM, pretty badass, and all that good stuff. Anyways, guys, hopefully you liked the video. Uh, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and go and download Kinchin Sync as soon as you can. Anyways, guys, this has been Jared for the Smoking Android. Until next time, the Smoking Android, signing out. Peace.